This is CBN News Watch. And thank you so much for joining us. I'm Ephraim Graham. The suspected gunman who is accused of opening fire inside a Maryland newsroom Thursday is appearing in court today. Police say he sh shot and killed five people and injured two in the targeted attack on the Capital Gazette newspaper in Annapolis. 38-year-old Jared Ramos was arrested for the incident. The retired editor of the paper says Ramos had a history of social media threats against him and the paper for reporting on a crime he committed in 2011. Gazette employees refused to allow the tragedy to stop them from publishing the paper. The shooting is the cover story today. As President Trump weighs his next, picks to, next pick to sit on the U.S. Supreme Court, Democrats on Capitol Hill are strategizing the best way to block it. But as Charlene Aaron explains, their options are limited. For conservatives who had Supreme Court vacancies in mind when they voted for President Donald Trump, Justice Anthony Kennedy's retirement is a dream come true. Now they see a path to overturning Roe v. Wade, the case that made abortion legal. Kennedy's retirement is a momentous event for the pro-life movement. But abortion is also the issue that Democrats will use to mobilize their base and oppose a Trump nominee. This is a battle line that has been drawn that literally will put women's lives at risk, that undermines our civil rights, our human rights. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell vows to start the confirmation process as soon as the president announces his pick and schedule a vote before the midterm elections this fall. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer is leading Democrats crying foul. They say McConnell should wait until after the elections when a new Senate is elected. Because Republicans invoked the nuclear option when they were confirming Justice Gorsuch, they only need a simple majority of 51 votes to move to confirm whoever the president nominates. So really, the, the Democrats don't really, they don't really have any cards left. However, with abortion rights hanging in the balance, everyone's watching two Republican women. On the Republican side, I would watch Senators Murkowski and Collins. They are two pro-choice women, so they might oppose a judge, a justice that they feel is pro-life. But keep in mind, those two did vote for Justice Neil Gorsuch. Robertson says also watch out for Democrat Senators Manchin, Donnelly, and Heitkamp. They all voted to confirm Justice Gorsuch and are all seeking re-election in states Trump won in 2016. Catherine Glenn Foster with Americans United for Life says while she wants to see Roe fall, the goal should be nominating a judge whose duty is to the Constitution, not precedent. The fact that we're having this conversation about a nominee opposing Roe v. Wade or favoring Roe v. Wade um, it shows that we're having the wrong conversation. It means that the process is becoming political as we're trying to confirm justices instead of looking to justices who do view their highest calling as being to the U.S. Constitution. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. Here now is a look at some of the other big headlines we're following for you today inside the CBN newsroom. A dangerous heat wave is expected to surge across the northeastern half of the United States. AccuWeather meteorologists say that the temperatures are expected to top 100 degrees Saturday, with heat, and heat indexes reaching 115 degrees. The National Weather Service is warning people to limit their time outdoors. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and presidential advisor Ivanka Trump unveiled the 2018 Trafficking in Persons report yesterday. The report ranks countries annually on their efforts to stop human trafficking. Officials say the focus of this year's report is on ways local communities and national governments can address human trafficking. A new study shows the risk of dying dying once you reach a certain age. The study posted the journal of, in the Journal of Science notes the risk of dying at each age increases every year until a person reaches 80, and then it slows down. Researchers argue after 105 years old, you stop aging and the chance you could die remains the same. For more on these stories and others throughout the day, you can always check out CBNNews.com. Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein and FBI Director Christopher Wray face sharp questioning about the Justice Department's accused bias during a hearing before the House Judiciary Committee. The panel is investigating the FBI's conduct in separate investigations of Hillary Clinton and President Trump's campaign in Russia. Your use of this to attack me personally Why did you is it's not wrong. Personal. It's not personal. We just want the information. Why did you tell Peter Strzok not to enter our questions yesterday?
Mr. Jordan, I appreciate your sincere concerns, but I didn't get Peter to struck any instructions. He couldn't answer because FBI counsel told him he couldn't. He couldn't answer the question whether he'd ever communicated with Glenn Simpson, a journalist. Why couldn't he answer that question? Mr. Jordan, I appreciate you're saying it isn't personal. Sometimes it feels that way. How do I know, sir? I mean, I, you interviewed Mr. Strzok. I didn't. It works for you. Doesn't work for us. That woman yields back. Meanwhile, the House passed a resolution demanding the Justice Department and FBI turn over documents related to the investigations of Hillary Clinton and President Donald Trump's campaigns by July 6th. The resolution is not enforceable, but sending a strong message to the Justice Department. Lawmakers have even threatened to hold top officials in contempt or even impeach them if the documents aren't turned over. President Trump is celebrating the six-month anniversary of his tax reform law as a, a crowning achievement for Republicans and the country. But as Jennifer Wishon reports, there is a little-known provision in the law that puts new taxes on churches and Christian ministries. The tax reform law was designed to lower taxes and make filing them simpler. But for thousands of churches and nonprofits, it's costing them millions just to provide parking spaces for their employees. It's kind of unbelievable. Believe it. The law treats employee parking as a fringe benefit, imposing a 21% income tax on each parking space a church or nonprofit provides. It's meant to create an equal playing field, putting nonprofits in line with for profit corporations that also pay the tax. Dan Busby is president of the Evangelical Council for Financial Accountability. He says churches weren't expecting to get hit with, of all things, an income tax bill. There are nearly 15 million employees that work in the United States uh, for nonprofits, nearly 10% uh, of the workforce. So that's 15 million parking places. And uh, conservatively, it is going to cost the nonprofit community as a whole up to a billion dollars. That's a lot of money for ministries that rely on donations. So how much does a parking space cost? The IRS is still calculating it, and Busby predicts it will cost nonprofits even more money, as some will have to hire accountants to sort through the new requirement. Really something special. Last winter, as lawmakers touted tax savings and the ability to file on a postcard, no one mentioned the new tax on their local churches. Legislation to remove the tax is now before the House Ways and Means Committee. We had the big corporate, the, the push for corporate tax rate reduction and the postcard, and in between were a jillion pieces of, in that legislation just like this one that impact you and I. And millions of parking places. And millions of parking places. It's certainly not the policy many lawmakers want to be explaining as they gear up their campaigns for re-election. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News, Stevens City, Virginia. Coming up, a history-making visit of Prince William as he traveled to the Holy Land this week. That is next on Newswatch. It's coming up right after this. Prince William, the Duke of Cambridge, made history this week when he became the first British royal to ever visit Israel and the Palestinian areas. CBN Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell brings us the story. Prince William spent much of his trip meeting with regular Israelis and Palestinians, particularly young people. He watched a Palestinian folk dance and met with Israel's recent Eurovision Song Contest winner. I'm also struck by how many people in the region want a just and lasting peace. This is only too evident among the young people I have met who long for a new chapter to be written in the history of this region, a chapter which will secure them a prosperous future and will ensure that their enormous talents can flourish. These are not extravagant aspirations, but the same aspirations of young people everywhere in the world. Prince William also has a special connection to the Jewish people. His great-grandmother Alice saved a Jewish family during the Holocaust and is buried on the Mount of Olives. For her heroism, Yad Vashem honored her as a righteous Gentile. The official certificate in our memorial with Yad Vashem, yes. which we visited, uh, for uh, Princess Alice, great spirit, great service. The visit also comes at a time when the Palestinians are at odds with the U.S. Over President Trump's move of the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem and a perceived bias in favor of Israel. But Prince William's message to both Israelis and Palestinians was the same. 
I know I share a desire with all of you and with your neighbors for a just and lasting peace. The prince visited Jerusalem's old city and prayed at the Western Wall. Before his visit, the palace created a stir when it said Prince William's visit to the old city would be to occupied Palestinian territory. But his visit was even-handed. The prince met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and President Reuven Rivlin. Rivlin asked the prince to deliver a message to the Palestinians. I would like you to send him a message of peace and tell him it is about time. It is about time that we have to find together the way to build confidence. A day later, he met with Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas, who said the Palestinians want peace. I hope it won't be the last visit, and we hope that you will visit us very soon when the Palestinian people get their independence. The British have a long history in the Middle East. They ruled what was then called Mandatory Palestine for decades, but pulled out 70 years ago with the creation of the State of Israel in 1948. Although this is the first visit of the royal family, it's not likely to be the last. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Still ahead, what young Americans can learn from a battle that took place 155 years ago. We're going to bring you a look at the hidden lessons of the historic Battle of Gettysburg. Next week marks the 155th anniversary of the Battle of Gettysburg. While it marks a major turning point in the Civil War, that's only part of the story. As Paul Strand reports, young Americans could learn about how to live and even how to die from the lessons of Gettysburg. These church leadership school students traveled all the way from Washington State to the Gettysburg battlefield to learn more than Civil War history. They pursued lessons on values and self-sacrifice not included in many public school classrooms these days. The 1863 battle would last for three long days. On the second day, Confederate commanders tried to take a nearly deserted hill called Little Round Top, where they could hit the Union Army from the side, shred the whole line, and open a clear path all the way to Washington, D.C. This Yankee general saw them coming and moved to counter, getting troops rushed to Little Round Top. As depicted in the film Gettysburg, Colonel Joshua Chamberlain, a fervent Christian, and his soldiers of the 20th Maine then fought to hold the hill against overwhelming odds because retreating could mean defeat of their whole army and possibly the end of America as a country. Some folks would have you believe history is all about the decisions of great leaders and vast movements of people, but sometimes it comes down to the decisions of just a few and those of the little guys, which is why it's particularly fitting that the fate of the Civil War was decided right here on Little Round Top. It's amazing the sacrifice that these men made to stand the ground when a lot of people would have cut and run. Pastor Trevor Seaman read from a Confederate's letter how he believed God saved Colonel Chamberlain that day after the Confederate got the Colonel in his gun sights. I started to pull the trigger, but some queer notion stopped me. Mm. Then I got ashamed uh, of my weakness and went through the same motion uh, again. I had you perfectly certain, but then that same queer something shut right down on me. Wow. I couldn't pull the trigger and I gave it up. In that queer feeling, we would know to be the power of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Sweep them down the hill. As the soldiers began to run out of ammunition, Understand? Chamberlain made the boldest of moves, yes, fix bayonets and charge. Bayonets! Seaman calls what then happened a supernatural act of God. Some confusion went into the enemy's camp mm -hmm. and somehow these men without bullets, charging down, making this roar, mm -hmm. pushed back the enemy. They end up capturing them and winning the day. The young people got the true meaning. And 300 people influenced the entire course of a nation in one act of obedience, in one act of courage. Lot says he wants that same stand in the gap anointing those men had. It's, it's fixed bayonets. We're not going to back up. We're not going to give up. We're going to pray. We're going to cry out for mercy for our nation. And they began to do it right then and there. Well, thank you for just the courage that you gave Joshua Chamberlain in the 20th Maine, Lord, that they yeah. accomplished your will. I thank you for the sacrifice that's represented on this ground. Take up the cause, uh, the battles of our day, the battle of race, the battle of hmm. abortion. And Lord, that we just be yeah. a voice when, you, when others want to abandon the post. Cameron Coma prays for someone to pick up where the public schools leave off. If they're not teaching this in the schools, then this baton's got to be passed on to the church for the church to teach it. Lot says God is behind these student excursions and told Lots on one such trip. That said, if you will take those young ones, stand them on the ground, 
and tell them the stories, they'll never get away from it. It reminds me of Cassidy Newsom says it'll never get away from her. And here stood a group of men, small in number, but they had the strength of the Lord on their side. And they were willing to say yes, and they were willing they to do what it took. The Civil War lasted years, involved millions of people spread across dozens of states. But in the end, the decision of who'd win that war and make this a united nation again was decided across this valley and up these slopes by just a few thousand men willing to give their all for their cause. Paul Strand, CBN News, reporting from Little Round Top, Gettysburg Battlefield. What a powerful lesson, God's hand in America's history. Stay with us. There's much more of CBN News Watch coming up, and it's coming up right after this. Welcome back. It is the weekend. If your plans include going to the movies, our friends at Plugged In Online are taking a look at the new basketball comedy, Uncle Drew. You could just hear people whispering, Drew, 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 Drew. In the movie Uncle Drew, Dax is a man on a mission. Never mind that he's living with his girlfriend and doesn't even help with rent. Hey, he's been known to spring for Taco Tuesdays after all. But these days, his main obsession is winning the prestigious Rucker Park Street basketball tournament. Winner brings home a tidy $100,000. And bringing home that prize would help him and his girlfriend move on in their relationship. The problem is, street basketball is rather unpredictable. What's more, his star players just jump ship. And with less than a week to go, recruiting another team feels next to impossible. What's that smell? Is that a grudge? But then Dak spots an old guy in the park who's got some serious moves. Someone like you could combine the old school with the new school. And he's interested in playing on Dax's team. <laughs> but only if he controls the roster and gets his four old geezer friends to play as well. This is where it happens. Let's do this. Despite this being a poorly written film with characters who flip-flop personality-wise, Dax is a really nice guy. Plus, there's an upbeat message about forgiving others and following one's dream. But all of this gets marred by some sleazy dialogue, a bare backside gag, foul language, and a baptism that's play for laughs. Certainly no slam dunk. I'm giving Uncle Drew two and a half, nothing but nets, out of five for family friendliness. For an in-depth review of this film, or really anything else at your local box office, be sure to check out PluggedIn.com. Plugging you into the movies, I'm Bob Olszewski for Focus on the Family's Plugged In Movie Review. All right, thank you so much, Bob. Right now it is time for your Friday Faithful, and I hope this message will jumpstart your day and your week. And know this, your works can't save you, but they do matter. You are saved by grace through faith to do good works. The works don't save you, but what you do matters to God and to the world around you. Your works impact those around you and are a witness to God's goodness. So your works do matter. With that word, I encourage you to make this a fabulous Friday and a wonderful rest of the week. Well, that is going to do it for this edition of CBN Newswatch. Remember, you can find more of our exclusive coverage of the issues you care most about always at CBNNews.com. And we'd love to hear from you. We want to know what you think about the stories you've seen here today. You can do that by emailing us, newswatch at CBN.com. And, of course, you can always reach out and touch us on Facebook, Instagram, as well as Twitter. Hope you'll join us again right here next time. Make this a fabulous Friday and a wonderful weekend. Goodbye, everybody. God bless. Thank you so much for your company. Remember, the news continues 24-7 at CBNNews.com. We are updating that always. Bye-bye.